Welcome to another edition of Cam Instructor's Mastercam Tips. This video is taken from our new 2D high speed milling course and is part 3 of 5 in the dynamic milling section. This video will look at the gap and motions settings. Dynamic milling part 3. The previous video finished off looking at the first pass offset settings. In this video, we will continue exploring the dynamic milling toolpath settings, starting off with the gap and motions parameters. Open the cut parameters page of OP15. There are several areas used to define the gap and motions for the operation. If the toolpath needs to reposition an amount greater than this gap size, a retract movement will be used. If not, the tool will stay on the surface and move between passes at the programmed feed rate. The first area is used to define the gap size. This can be done by either specifying an actual distance or by using a value that is a percentage of the tool's diameter. Below the gap size settings are the fields to define the micro lifts that occur when the motion is less than the gap size. Here we can define the micro lift distance, which is the amount in Z the tool will retract off the surface, as well as specify a feed rate for this motion. Since this motion is not cutting, a very high value can be used. How high depends on the machine tool being used. Some machines are able to feed faster and more accurately than others. Take this into consideration when setting extremely high feed rates here. Further down is the settings to control what happens when the motion is greater than the gap size. There are several options here. Never, when exceeding a boundary, when exceeding a boundary or exceeding a distance, when exceeding a boundary and exceeding a distance, and when exceeding a distance. Never eliminates retracts from the toolpath for these types of moves. Avoiding a boundary adds a retract to avoid intersecting boundaries. Mastercam can detect and avoid chained geometry, part features and stock. Exceeding a distance adds a retract when the next cut begins at a distance that is greater than the gap size. The remaining options combine exceeding distance and avoiding boundary with the operative and as well as or. Select OP15 so that its toolpath shows in the graphics area. Skew the part slightly if needed so the retracts can be seen. This toolpath shows what happens when the motion is less than the gap. There are no retracts. The only Z motions that occur are at the beginning and end of the toolpath. Microlifts are being employed throughout the path. They are a little hard to see. Switch to a front view. Now you can see some of the toolpath is at a different Z height. This is a micro lift. Launch into a back plot. Notice the Z depth of the toolpath. When we get to an area where the tool is repositioning for the next cut, notice the new Z depth as well as the new feed rate. OP16 shows the toolpath when the motion is greater than the gap size, and set to avoiding a boundary. This toolpath allows retracts when the distance it needs to travel contains a boundary which can be avoided. Notice, micro lifts still occur in the V section. OP19 again shows the toolpath when the motion is greater than the gap size, but this time it is set to exceeding a distance. This toolpath will generate a retract whenever a motion greater than the gap size is generated. Some micro lifting still occurs in the V sections. Reducing the gap size further would eliminate more of these. Op 17 and 18 show the results of the Boolean functions and or with exceeding distance and avoiding boundary. 
It is key to find balance between retracts and micro lift repositioning moves. The more complex the part is and the more avoidance regions it has, more attention should be paid to this setting to create a truly efficient toolpath that does not waste time retracting too much or having overly long micro lift movements. This completes the gap and motions group overview. In the next video, we will look at the step over and the minimum toolpath radius settings.